So I, I said, I'll give you some examples. So here's a couple of examples of bid'ah, and of course, each of the groups that will, the two groups, they will have an opinion. One will say, this is not bid'ah. The other one said, it's a good bid'ah. Or one will, they all agree the bad bid'ah is the bad, but they will have a different opinion. One will classify, this is not bid'ah. The other one said, no, this is a good bid'ah. And so they will have that. But among the areas in which bid'ah exists, recording the Quran, they used to consider that bid'ah. Uh, studying Arabic grammar is bid'ah. Building schools, bid'ah. And they use the basis that in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu none of this existed. So this is a new matter. The birth of the Prophet, we know, we mentioned a little bit about last week, um, the maulid, whether you should have a program for the, the birth of the Prophet or not. And each group has their prominent scholars on both sides of this argument. And each group has its um, evidence-based justification for it. The Prophet Sallallahu for example, he said on my birthday, I'm going to fast. So they used that and said, well, hey, the Prophet commemorated his birthday, you know, but he just chose to do it by fasting. So that don't mean that we can't celebrate our birthday because the Prophet Sallallahu did something different for his birthday and they have their arguments back and forth. Decorating the masjid uh, was considered bid'ah and it's still considered by groups of people as bid'ah. Um, having two adhan for the Jumu'ah, Osman ibn Afan, he was the... Um, he used to notice that when they give the one adhan, it happened in his time. In the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was one adhan for Jumu'ah. And then Usman, and it was not considered bid'ah because adhan was already established. So he didn't create a new practice. All he did, he said, look, the business people are coming late to the masjid because the first adhan is catching them off balance. They have to lock up their shops and so on. So let us make two adhan so they will be alerted with the first one. And they could close their shops and start to make their way to the masjid, and then we'll do the second one. Um, they consider that as a bid'ah also. 40 day dead work, considered a bid'ah. Hijri calendar, which came in the time of Amr al Khattab, uh, they consider that a bid'ah. Tarawi, reciting the whole Quran in Tarawi. This is not a practice, as I said, the Prophet only came out two nights. And all over the Muslim world, we practice. Um, the Tarawi Salah with reciting the Quran. And of course, um, both groups are okay with this because one group says, hey, there's a good bidah. The other group said it's not bidah at all because there's nothing bad about it. And most of these here actually, the group that says bidah only means bad, they accept all of these. Uh, salah, collective dua. This is another issue which people argue about. There actually is no hadith or evidence to show that the Prophet Sallallahu made a collective du'a after the Salah. Yet, if you go in many parts of the world, you will see, including ours, and our masjid, you will see after this, this Salah, the Imam raises his hand and makes a collective du'a. There actually is no incident that the Prophet Sallallahu or any of the companions ever did this. This is a practice that was introduced later on. And so they consider this bid'ah. 15th of Shaban, there is no evidence that the 15th of Shaban was ever commemorated for anything. Uh, there's a lot of weak hadith, and on 15th of Shaban, it's like one of our biggest nights. You know, uh, the 15th of Shaban, people um, have all kinds of ways they come up, they go to the graveyard and so on. Um, there is no, nothing from the authentic sources that makes 15th of Shaban special for anything. So that is considered, they consider that to be that. Carpets in the masjid. There are messages in Morocco in which they refuse to put carpets in the masjid because they say it's bidah. And so they would put like these chatai, these straw mats and they refuse to decorate the masjid with even having carpets. And so all of these areas, and there are many, many more, are examples of, um, for example, Muslims used to say, hey, you cannot give the adhan in the masjid, that this is a bid'ah. You have to go outside the masjid and give the adhan. Microphone was considered a, a bid'ah. You know, in the early days, they had, you know, even coffee they considered to be bid'ah, drinking coffee. You know, so there were many, many um, historical ways in which they evolved to make things considered bid'ah. And so we have got to stick to the principle which we mentioned before, that uh, in terms of worship, you have to have an evidence and non-worship, you have to have a prohibition. And we have to follow very closely, as I said from the beginning, that this is a topic which is not for the lay person to go about saying what is bid'ah and what is not you know, we have to be very careful about that and make sure we are following 
people who we trust their, their knowledge and that they will guide us in the right direction. Um, of course, we come back to our beautiful verse that this today I have completed and perfected our religion for you and chose Islam for you. As your religion, the fact that we have a religion that says it's perfect, which means we no need any editing or revision or adding or subtracting from it. So we don't need any bid'ah to make it more complete. You don't need to add anything to make any worship better because that is like saying the Prophet didn't do his job. You know, Allah has given us a perfect faith and so we'd have no reason to go and bring anything that you could bring or conceive that will make you closer to Allah. You want to pray five rakah fajr? It doesn't bring you closer to Allah. It's bid'ah. And so um, as I began my presentation tonight by saying to you this is a very technical and very difficult topic and I'm trying to just simplify it as much as I can there's much 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 more to bid'ah than what I've given you they have categories of bid'ah they have bid'ah uh, fa'liya bid'ah idafiya bid'ah then they have they have categories of um, you know a fard bid'ah uh, uh, a mustahab bid'ah and a muba bid'ah and a makru bid'ah and all of that uh, but I wanted to, at least for this class, we're just giving a base understanding. So in quick summary, understand that bidah have two different opinions. There's a group of people who feel there's good bidah, bad bidah, and there's another group that says all bidah is bad. The, the end results are the same in that they both agree that the bad of the bidah is bad. And the, the good things that we may introduce into the faith that enhances it and so on, one group call it good bida and the other group says it's not bida at all it's part of the religion itself and so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand this so that's the first um, topic that we wanted to cover today